this writer entered the MFA program with a BA and a master's already under her belt. I had the pleasure of getting acquainted with her during my first semester as a grad student when we took Miley Chapman's forms class. What stood out to me most, and I think everyone who knows her would agree, is the tenderness of her heart, which is always grounded in her work, whether it be writing poetry, teaching, or any of the forms of performance art she practices. Let's welcome Autumn Widows. Thank you, I'm only an hour late, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I do apologize to everyone, we thought it started at seven. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read, uh, I was only gonna read one poem, and then Ryan Malloy was like, only one? And I said, well, okay, I'm gonna read um, a selection, sorry, a, a portion of a long poem, and then possibly end with just one, a, a follow-up poem. Um, this is from, they will illuminate the lands. One, so what if I want to scream eternal? What if the clouds rain down the angels' tears in which they sprouted souls of animals and plants? And what if I could pinpoint a thread where the needle entered and never left? The girl who stoned herself one afternoon in a marbled library. Is she the same one who believes she could write the biography of God from beginning to end? Is she the same girl who fell into her own darkness upon attempts to reach the ends of all universes? And then, as if from a dream that occurred many times to awake radiant 20 years later, is she different from the girl who crossed the night ocean? Is she the woman who likes her sentences long and hard? I can't tell where terror originates. This is the refrain. Someday words zap along inside me until they come out in fury. I can't refrain from those moments. I am flying through the eternal city, a claptrap place obliterated years before I was born, rebuilt again in splendor, its regal parks yearning for a glimpse of summer, the verdant grass nourishing itself upon the dead's marrow. Well, I am there still, as I am also there now, in the same place 20 years later. Two, you were not going anywhere for years, and then suddenly your life burst forth, or was always bursting, a nucleus formed in a nuclear flash. You just weren't awake to notice it. You had been sleeping for 20 years, and then you awoke with a deep fear inside that you were now Frankenstein's bride, or that a ghost from the American War had threaded itself into your seams during those monsoon days when a fever dream swept waves up the Mekong and you writhed in pain, half living as you always were, half dead as you were becoming. You might tell yourself, yes, I was there for the fall of Saigon, only it was 25 years later. You make such ridiculous claims sometimes. Summer was the only season that year and you pined for a cool alpine breeze and a fernve that only a Bavarian village could provide as you looked out across a pearl city that kept you up all night, that barely slept in your arms, even as you tried to comfort it. You can't remember most of what happened that the year that followed. A bomb had gone off. The small details have been disappeared. Every day is not just for the thief, it is the thief. You want to ask, and you have asked, but any reply you have willfully ignored. You go about frivolously, staring out New Haven windows onto a world that looks nothing like New Haven, while wondering how you can fit what living means into a box you can bury underneath the linden tree outside your childhood home. Three, it's easier to imagine than it is to be in a world that has too many possibilities, dark alleyways filled with loan sharks, bad debts that can never be cleared, death on the high seas, death behind every door, so that all the doors must be locked, shut, and forgotten until a door is no longer a door, and nothing exists outside but that which is already inside. The world will not compose itself to amend to your ways. Sorry. Its wildness stretches endlessly, even after you've pruned it back, carefully clipping the tea rose you've tenderly tended. Those years you spent so lonely, alone on a couch in front of the sea, sitting placidly at the dinner table, finishing the second bottle of wine. 
imagining yourself as frontiers man, or nothing at all. Death comes at you while jumping out of a plane. At 18, you 15,000 feet above in a blue that seems to be not as infinite as it appeared. While at play in a grassy field, you dreaming of other worlds. It is where the sky meets the void, this blue that is darkened by the deepest night, where all the words become constellations that will always fail. But the image of this voided ether will remain so burnt into your sockets that it will appear as a petroglyph reflected off the pupil of your eye in a cave where you've lived. Four, what is a lifetime? Birth to death, still, what appears to be the past unfolds repeatedly, not in a line nor in a circle, but in the style of a red rose on a white table or a lotus floating through the charred air. Those of us in the future know hardship has come in the nation's undoing. The white stars on a fraying flag, its indigo washed in the soldier's blood. Profligate wars produce angry ghosts. Vengeance for past injustices, the poison eating the roots. I walk among the living, my mind always elsewhere. There in the streets of Saigon, as in the streets of New York or at the suicide cliffs where my eyes look out to hands in every teeming ocean wave. The ghosts are among us. I can't free myself from this haunting knowledge. What does it matter if I'm no longer the girl who at 15 believes she could understand God in the early hours? Watching a sky slowly bleed red into blue. What does it matter that my land envisions, envisions itself everywhere? Instead of Atlantis, it comes in the form of hamburgers and french fries and stocks and bonds. Could anything be more human? I was tired of wandering the old worlds, seeking solace from my worn down habits, so I went west, but I was neither young nor a man. To live in a desert that was once the ocean is to understand that the earth may not be ours. We cannot fit all this land into our mouths. The land will turn against us for the sins we will later seek pardons from. When we walk through a valley so low, Hermes will lead us down this asphodel into asphodel metals that reflect back the drought we created. We continue on walking through the desert that stretches beyond the verdant valley. At night, the nocturnal animals recite a declaration of independence, and we hear a foreign voice, a, cac a cacophony of voices, a foreign language. The ghosts have entered the rusted particles. They watch our every move. What do the mountains care for human names? Only the mountain knows its true name. It does not live in the imagination. Cut off its head and it still lives on, the earth slowly heaving itself up against the vibration of tectonic plates that raise and lower the ocean's waves, promising the desert a, a water it deeply desires. But bombs are not mountains. They are babies birthed from our imagination. They too have names, and they flower in blood and shattered bone proliferating in green. Maybe it is the bomb that I can blame for the quickening of my pulse, the fear that attached itself to me. A soldier's ghost remembering the flash before death. Okay, this is my final one, it's called Origami. The final eight are hanging in Salem today, while a blood moon rises on the First Republic, ending the long rule of the Ancien Regime. In this same moment, a fierce light blinds every, <coughs> excuse me, everyone off, coast, off the coast of Prince Edward Island. And somewhere else, the Earth's course seeks its revenge until all is made new again. My eyes, in fiery awe, I do not enter as I, I do not cry as I enter the world. For birthdays, my, mother's, my mother takes us to eat at McDonald's, where we stare towards our futures while my mother spends what little she can afford on one hamburger, which she cuts into the most delicious thirds. A storm brings wind gusts through the autumnal leaves, making a fiery halo light up where the women's hair should be on those bodies hanging in Salem. In the meantime, bumbling King Louis and his coiffed wife are stripped of their divine right on an abnormally warm and sunny day. While well, a light as quick and powerful as the detonation of every star hides its mystery in the overcast gloom off the coast of Prince Edward Island. And red rain from purple clouds drops softly as the sea boils the earth into its next incarnation.
A violent birth marks the beginning and another beginning, pushing me out into the world and my mother into a new life. We want to experience happiness. We, too, want what all Americans are promised and what they continuously yearn for. I don't believe his statements about us coming to <clears throat> the end point of mankind's ideological evolution. Our histories are always at the precipice, repeatedly opening the same paper flower again and again. Thank you.